which am I? Welcome. One of my more popular projects is the M5 Stack Sats. Uh, it's a little lightning Bitcoin point of sale terminal. I can see why it's popular because it uses the M5 Stack Faces Development Kit, which is a really nice form factor. It's got a little, um, uh, it's got a little charging dock which you can sit in, which is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, but it's about sixty, seventy dollars. Um, I wanted to make a, a cheap version of this to run as a tutorial at conferences and then also for people who haven't got so much money and you know, couldn't afford a $60, $70 price tag. And then also we are trying to you know, bank the unbanked and all that. Um, so uh, I came up with uh, the quickening, which is uh, it performs the same functions. It works as point of sale terminal. It's got a TFT screen, just like the M5 stack. It's got a little adhesive keypad in the back. It's an ESP32 um, powering it, just like the M5 stack. Um, and uh, although I did have to make the case, obviously the case isn't included in the price tag. So just like the um, M5 stack sats, um, you can input an amount and it will convert it on the fly to Satoshis. Um, I don't want that much, so I put in two cents, which is 267 Satoshis. I'm going to cancel that. So you can press star by can you can press if you press star, it cancels it. So I'm going to put in one cent, which is 133 Satoshis. You're going to hit the little hashtag. Um, it says processing. Get my wallet ready. Okay, now I've got a uh, QR code, so I can um, scan the QR code. Ooh. And it says, do you want to pay that 133 Satoshis? I say, yep. And then give it a second. Boom. Uh, and it says complete on the on the screen. It goes back for the for the next customer. So it has the exact same functionality as M, as the M5 stack sats, but it's not quite as pretty looking. As always, all the code and stuff you need for this project is on uh, my GitHub, which is ArtBTC, and it's quickening. Um, so I call it the quickening in homage to Highlander, great film, and uh, it's um, it's a bit like that. You know, when you first make that first lightning transaction, when you first build your first uh, uh, Bitcoin. IoT device, it's kind of like a, a quickening, uh, you know, it's a, the st a stirring of something, you know, it's uh, um, so yeah, so it kind of reminded me of that. And it's also got lightning bolts and cool graphics, and so I thought I'd nick it. Um, it's under eight dollars, which is amazing. So it's, it's the cheapest uh, Bitcoin point of sale terminal on the planet. Um, and also worth noting as well, it's the one of the only, I mean, I think I'm, I've, I'm the only one who's actually made uh, the com completely um, no tr trusted third party point of sale systems for Bitcoin, uh, which is weird. So yeah, we need to get these devices out there. Um, I'm using the SP32 Node MCU32S, which is like $5. Uh, buy that board if you can. If you've got a different SP32 dev board, um, there's plenty out there, then you'll have to look for a GPIO map to figure out how to wire, wire up our um, module. So we've got a screen. A 1.8 TFT, uh, 160 by 128, four times four adhesive matrix keypad, um, and then eight female jumper cables. Uh, so that's about five dollars. I said about yeah four dollars. You get the four dollars on AliExpress. This is about two three dollars, and then this is this is about fifty cents something like that, and they're you know twenty pence or something twenty cents. Install the Arduino IDE, um, and then these are the libraries you need to install. Um, that's for the keypad, obviously, Arduino JSON, that just takes care of the, the JSON formatted data, which we get back from our Zap Neutrino wallet. Um, oh, Zap Neutrino wallet. Now, my, my environment I'm using for this is I'm getting my device to talk directly to a, a Zap Neutrino wallet. So rather than have a full LND um, node, which you, you could, you know, um, uh, have this, do that. But rather than do that for development purposes, I've just got a um, Zap desktop wallet installed and then I'm accessing the LND uh, Neutrino node behind the Zap desktop wallet which means I don't need to down the blockchain or anything um, which is fine for development purposes obviously always try and run your own full node uh, but it also kind of like you could argue that there's some um, uh, better security in that um, less funds are exposed if somebody gets my you know my admin mac room for example so I've, I've got a video for how to set that up it's only a short video on the BTC IoT playlist so check that out um, I'm not sure why that's open. Right, so where are we? Oh yeah, so uh, TFT ESPI, that's the, the uh, library which controls the screen we're plugging in. And then QR code, that's the thing which makes the, uh, the QR code library by a guy called Richard Moore. That's um, what actually builds our QR code. So the easiest way to run this project is to download it and then open that. 
OK, now, on your computer, when you install the Arduino IDE, you'll have a sketchbook somewhere. You'll need to copy the, well, pull the, the quickening folder here into the sketchbook. Where is it? There it is. And then we've got three files, uh, TLS certificate. So the, the, the service I'm using is something called servio.net, which means I don't need a TLS certificate. Um, sometimes in some, um, uh, if, you, if you open up your L&D server, to the to the internet sometimes people might need an SSL you might need an SSL SS certificate to actually access that server but we don't with the, the solution I'm using uh, this is an image for the splash screen um, if we open up the quickening I know it'll open Arduino okay information in the header here on the wiring um, and some stuff about how to set up the servio thing uh, some libraries we're calling, which we've already talked about. Uh, here's the file, so there's the, the image, uh, the splash screen, the TLS certificate if you need it. For this example, we don't need it, so it's um, it's actually uncommented somewhere. There, there it is, it's uncommented there. Uh, so if you do need it, you just you know comment that back in. And then also go to these lines, um, and then uh, comment those in as well. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. There's, you need to put in your Wi-Fi credentials, you need to pick a subdomain name for your Servio instance, so I'm going to call it Quicky. Um, you need your read uh, macaroon and your invoice macaroon. Um, in the tutorial um, here on the on the BCIT playlist, I, I tell you how to do that, how to get the, um, the strings which we can put into Arduino projects. Um, here you can actually change uh, so if I change that to USD, um, then that will now um, it will get it will get the conversion rates for USD uh, for for my device. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, blah blah blah. We've got some variables. Things set up the keypad there. Setup. Here we go. So every Arduino project has a setup function, which starts here and then ends here. Um, so this all this is just going all this code is going to be run on, run on setup. Um, so all it's basically doing is turning the screen on, and then it's displaying our splash image, um, and it's just checking to make sure the Wi-Fi is connected. If it times out after five seconds, then you'll get a little error saying Wi-Fi not connected. Um, the when you put your Wi-Fi details at the top, it is case sensitive, so remember that. Then it goes on to do the little lightning bolt thing, so the little lightning flash on the uh, splash screen. Then it does a no check to make sure. What's that? Oh, it's just that's literally just it saying that it's running a no check. Um, should we go look for that function? Bum, 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 bum. There we are. Um, so sorry, yes, it just says initializing on the on the display to give some feedback, and then we go and collect the while that says initializing, we go and collect the the rates, the conversion rates, um, and then we do a no check to make sure that our device can actually connect to our node. So that function is down here somewhere there's no check um, so if it can't connect to the node then it will say no no detected yeah so here's so if you were using SSL certificate you would need to comment that back in but we're not so we don't need to um, where are we once that's been that's that's done it runs the uh, main loop um, so first it clears a couple uh, clears an input variable here um, and then it runs the page input function which is here um, so that's literally just the the, the, the screen you land on um, uh, just the you know pre amount then hashtag and then it says in euros satoshis and then press star um, so it, it, it draws that on the screen and then now when we when someone actually presses the keypad we want um, we want to be able to see the little zeros for the you know the, the, the euros or the pounds or whatever um, I just noticed an error actually that there where it says euro i need to change that so i'm going to change that to in fact maybe i'll do this now so you can kind of see how i've changed it so we've got btc usd and then we've got from that string we get the last three digits of that string and we make a new string called on sub currency so i'm going to copy that and because um, if i left this as if it is it is it just draw uh, euro on the screen so we don't want that um, so I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to put that string in there, put a plus in there. So now it will say, it will just display USD um, or whatever that string is. 
and then it will add the little colon and the space on the end. Pretty cool. Uh, so that's how easy it is to program in Arduino. Right, now, I'll have to change the code on the GitHub. Where am I? Oh, yeah. Um, it's There's a whole bunch of loops. This is really quite complicated, this code, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically, it checks to make sure that a key's been pressed. So if a key um, uh, is not no key, so basically, if, if a key is pressed, um, then uh, we, well, we get the keypad, whatever's been pressed, and then we lock it up in this string. And then we say, is that a hashtag? If it's a hashtag, we run this code here. Um, so basically, if it's a hashtag, it means someone's inputted them out and they pressed hashtag, and it will go and generate the invoice. Um, uh, once, the in, once the invoice has been generated and displayed, uh, so blah, 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 request invoice, get hash, show address, check payment. Um, uh, so these are all functions which we've got down here. So the show address function, for example, Actually, let's look at the let's look at the request. Um, request an invoice. Here we go. So this is actually connecting to our Zap wallet and saying we want an invoice for X amount. Okay. Again, there's one of those things you need to uncomment if you're using an SSL certificate, but we're not. Um, so this is what we're actually posting to uh, Zap, which is uh, value. So the amount which has been inputted in Satoshi's. Um, there's a little memo just so you've got some sort of reference, uh, which is attached to the invoice, which will show up on your Zap wallet. And then we've got uh, an option, private true. So that basically means we want root hints because our um, Zap Neutrino node is, um, isn't what we, you know, a public node. In order for the network to find it, we need a couple of root hints. So we're, we're setting that to true. Um, then we do the post request to the server, which is uh, our Servio um, domain. Uh, on the on a particular port, um, we give it the invoice macaroon, and then we post that data, and then it sends back a JSON of um, the the invoice, for, um, which we can display. So it sends back that that invoice, which is called pay request, um, eventually, and uh, it blocks pay request uh, of the the actual Lightning invoice in a string called pay request. We can then take pay request as we do somewhere up here. Here we go. And we can use the show address function. So we're taking that pay request string, which is the lightning invoice, and we're sending it to show address. So if we go down, here's show the show address function. So you can see that I've got the ability to send a string, uh, which is the invoice. So that's the invoice. So we clear the screen to white. So we've got a nice white background for our uh, QR code. And then we uh, set the invoice to all uppercase, because that makes the QR code 50% more efficient, so 50% smaller, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we do a little check here to see how big our QR code actually needs to be. And then we make the QR code, um, and we actually build the QR code out of little rectangles, so little tiny square black rectangles on the screen. We, we draw draw the QR code, so that's that. Okay. Um, bah, 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 what else do we need to show you? Duh, 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 duh. So, if yeah, display sats. Let's have a look at display sats. So if um, so that was all what happens if you you hit hashtag. But if you don't hit hashtag, uh, display sats just keeps running, which is here it is. So it takes the amount which has been entered and then it figures out using the conversion which we went and got at the beginning when we turned on our, on our device, it figures out what the fiat equivalent is, and then it displays the fiat and displays the Satoshis. Uh, so it's drawing the, the fiat and the Satoshis over this here. So the, f the fiat will end up here, and then the Satoshis will end up here. So there we are. Um, and that's pretty much all the code. So it's just a case of let's put this little device together and flash the code onto it. So I've got a couple of two keypads because this is probably likely the one you'll be able to get your hands on, um, but this is the preferred one because we're not actually using these buttons, so it's kind of just a waste of, of space. Um, on the actual, uh, in the code at the top there, it gives you the GPIO numbers, so we need GPIOs 12 to 13 for the keypad. So if I flip that over, go to GPIO 12 to 13, which is there, and then plug that in. If you use this keypad, you can pretty much do the same thing, except you'll just plug it in and it'll be plugged into an extra one on the end. But it's not the end of the world because we're still accessing the same same numbers on there, so it doesn't matter. But ideally, go for this keypad because it looks nicer. Um, now we're going to plug in our screen. 
I've already plugged our jumper wires into here. So we don't need, and if you can see there, there's a VCC pin. So that's actually the power pin. Um, but there's two power pins. There's that power pin, which powers the board. And then there's an LED pin, which then powers the LED behind the screen. Well, actually, the LED pin can also power the board. So we're just going to use that, and we're going to ignore this VCC pin here. Um, next to VCC, we've got ground. So the first thing we're going to plug in is the ground. That's next to 12 on our board, which is right next to the keypad. So that's nice and easy. After VCC, we've got uh, C. After sorry, after ground, we've got um, CS, which is chip select. You can see there on the code, and that goes to pin five. Oh, there we go. And then these are be much better jumper wires than the last ones I have. Don't don't scrimp and save on the jumper wires; it just causes you headaches. Uh, then after next to CS is reset which is 16 and that's red so 16 is just along from five two down from five and then the next one along is orange and that on the board is ao reset 16 dc ao that's 17 so that's next to 16 obviously and then Along from there, we've got SDA uh, on the yellow one, and SDA is mozzie, so that's our data line. So plug that into 23. There we go. And then green, SCK, pin 18. This is next to the brown one, next to pin 5. So I try to clump these together. Um, and then LED, which is, um, oh, it's the blue wire. So that's going to connect to, whoop, it's going to connect to our five volt, which is right down the bottom here. That's going to power the whole board. And there we are, that's it. It's all plugged in. Uh, obviously, you know, if you want to make it look highly professional and pretty like this, you'll have to build a little uh, box for it. I really like Lego. Lego is a great option. Um, you could use a little cardboard box or I don't know a tin or I don't know. You can be creative. All right, so I'm going to plug this in and then see if I can uh, get it um, coded up. Right, so I've entered my I've entered my Wi-Fi details. I've got a subdomain. I've put in my uh, read macaroon and my invoice macaroon. Um, there's not much, the whole macaroon's not there, so I don't really care if you see it. And there's not much you can do with it anyway, apart from making voices on my, my Zap thing. So um, we've selected the currency we want, which is USD. In fact, um, I'm going to go for GBP, Great British Pound. Uh, so I can think I can just flash it now. Are we connected to the board? There we are. We've got Node MCU32S selected from our boards here. Um, we've got the right USB port connected so now it's just compiling it so when it starts trying to connect to the ESP32 you need to press this little button to allow the uploading of the code and then it starts to upload it and what's gonna happen I think this screen I got a whole bunch of these screens I think this one might have been a little bit damaged oh there we go cool there's my splash screen we're gonna get some lightning oh goodness me that was a bit flickery wasn't it initializing no node detected there we are that's cool so our error message is working which means we haven't got a node detected so it's it's we've connected to wi-fi though. that's good um so i need to log into my zap wallet so it's on there we are cool um and then what do i need to do i need to open terminal and we're calling our servio.net thing, uh, quickie, quickie, hit enter. So now, ah, there we are. Look how quick that was, brilliant. And we can see here, we've got a connection from my um, IP address. Uh, so this is connected to my Wi-Fi, going over the internet through servio.net and then connecting to my Zap uh, Neutrino node. Um, and I can input an amount, hopefully. Two, two, three, eight, seven. Oh, look at that, it totally works, fantastic. And hit star to cancel that. I'm gonna give myself one cent 
uh, one pence because look it changed to gbp just as we programmed it to brilliant i'm going to hit the little hashtag thing and i'm setting myself one pence so currently one british pence is 150 satoshis hopefully it'll be a lot more by the time you watch this video processing um we've got a nice qr code there let's try blue wallet this time shall we I know Blue Wallet's custodial, but I like some of the development stuff they do. It's pretty cool. Um, although they do need to add a, if we click on send here, one of those little QR squares on their, their, um, on their camera thing. There we are. Uh, so there we are, folks. So 150 Satoshis. Do I want to pay it? Yes, please, I'll pay it. Boom, look at that. Fantastic, complete. And that's that done. So this is under $8. You can make yourself a uh, Bitcoin Lightning point of sale terminal, get to it and um, uh, you know, teach your friends how to make these things too and start experimenting with these microcontrollers. It's very important for Bitcoin that we do this to help unbank those, um, to help bank those uh, unbanked people um, uh, and also take control of the hardware. So yeah, carry on um, and I'll see you next time.